And we are back. So let's look at the book. Not sure who would have sent it. Tillet is like, seems like the kind of guy that he doesn't really know what's going on or doesn't care. And I think the, there's not really like a conspiracy going on. It's just people, um, sort of being told not to talk about it and, you know, keeping a sort of an isolated little village here and then forget about what happened 25 years ago and so on. <clears throat> and I think the innkeep, the, uh, the Lord or whatever, I can't remember his name. And then, well, and then the vicar, they all know sort of what's going on. Um, and they're sort of keeping tabs on everybody and stuff, but, uh, not sure who would know enough to give us a hint and then want to help us in a way. Well, we'll see. <clears throat> What's this? There's a strange stone strapped to the cover. Right, so day one. Arrived after a decent day's ride from Bakewell. This is a curious place. Locals seem distant. I'm to meet my local contact tomorrow, so it will be an early night for me. I shall try to keep a diary of my stay here and not give up by day three of the excavation as usual. Despite of the thrill of possible new discoveries, I cannot stop thinking about my dear wife and wonder if I should have left her in her current state. I must have faith that she will conquer this bout of illness. So I'm guessing this is the father's diary. Day four. Two to four, my journal has been ab has been abandoned. Let that. Oh, sorry. I mean the brother. Let that not speak for the excitement. I feel for this excavation. After much preparation, we dig tomorrow. Such an exceptional site with a unique history. Or the father. Uh, I keep interrupting myself because I'm thinking at the same time as I'm reading. So this is you know I guess this is the father's diary, but then you know it could be the brothers. As for the dangers, we shall meet them head first. We were prepared. I also sought out a local wise woman yesterday, and she provided me with a tincture for my beloved, beloved's nausea, gravidarum. I am sure she shall be pleased with it upon my return. So probably the brother, because the brother of the farmer, because it doesn't sound like the dad would be looking for a wise woman. Although maybe he changed <laughs> rapidly. <clears throat> Lo, a place of miracles, a planted seed sprouted before our eyes and illuminated our path. Nature's laws hold no meaning here, but I clutch my tablet with the knowledge that it shall end this. Rho Theta Epsilon 11 uh, That uh, that is a an S. I can't remember the Greek alphabet. We found the code was simply in the singularity uh, of the characters. All eyes must face towards the seventh archontic. Like <clears throat> this text means very little to me. <clears throat> So it's like pi, no pi is actually pi, rho, because I know the Cyrillic alphabet and they, it's a little bit different from the Greek one and then the Greek one has like the, uh, the letters change quite a lot sometimes 
e if the vowels are elongated or then if if the letter is a capital letter or, or a small letter um, so because I, I try to play these games without you know googling well for one not googling what's going to happen or what to do but then also not googling anything any of these sort of information <clears throat> but I think in some I can't remember what game it was but you actually needed some knowledge of a certain thing that was pretty rare and sometimes these games like might turn to that and my knowledge of things is very random so usually it misses but uh, we'll see because I have no idea what an, what an archontic is is um, in the singularity of the characters I mean it can mean a lot of things it can mean how many lines there are how many corners there are maybe but like putting them all together uh, and some of the text is in red, so I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it'll mean more when we uh, when we move forward. When the sun and the two moons meet, the guardian shall be defeated. So there's the moon. There's two snakes. I would imagine they're like, uh, is Viper the snake? Can't remember. Um, two circles, one with a dot on the left side, which would be maybe the moon and then like a star there. And then the other one is like the same circle, but mirrored. And then it has like a a star on it to something the sun and the two moons meet so maybe it's not actually a moon but that is actually a uh, that's an eclipse which would make more sense because uh was it the vicar who said that it looks like a moon or was it uh, our protagonist who said that it looks like a moon because it sort of did but you know when you when you look at things differently that that looks more like a an eclipse and the text would sort of describe that as well the snakes have lines coming out of their mouth it's red and there's two moons so maybe in like this other world that isn't bound to this nature or, or the laws of nature over here, wherever that is, total speculation, but maybe that place has two moons because the sun was a little bit different there too. I'm trying to think of like snakes, they are sort of coils. Um, their mouths look like moons or half moons so they might be figurative uh, and the two sort of donut uh, figures they don't really mean anything to me and they're not actually mirrored the in interior of it is mirrored but the exterior is not mirrored um, either that is that has nothing to do with anything but it is a detail nonetheless all right let's see the last page a dead language reveals the path for thou for thou art the moon the chief of the stars listen to the things that i have said follow the words of my mouth reveal thyself to me
Um, some of the words are capitalized. The moon, stars, listen, mouth. <clears throat> so that would be like an ear and a mouth. I don't know. Sound and something. I hear a whisper, not once, again and again. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. I will pour out my spirit. So basically, this sounds like the ravings of a madman. Um, he's not putting dates on anything except at day four, and then after that, nothing. So they're either on day four, or then he's just given up on dates in general. Let's see what she has to say. Maybe she's going to help us out a little bit. Hopefully not like too much, but... It appears to be a journal <clears throat> full of hogwash. I don't recognize the handwriting. Right. Maybe Stanley knows more about it. Right. So probably not the father then either as well. So it's, it's probably the, the brother of the farmer. Good morning. How's your head, Miss Bateman? That was quite the tune you treated us to last night. To be honest, Stanley, I felt better. I take it you slid this journal under my door? I beg your pardon? The journal, Stanley. Well, I certainly did no such thing. Nor could have anyone else. You're the only guest staying here. What's the meaning of all this? Do you propose that it manifested itself out of thin air? Well, uh... I mean, I, I don't know why he's lying unless he's being watched all the time. <laughs> um, and I don't want to... I'm sorry. I just don't understand how else it could have got there. Are you sure there was no one else here overnight? Without doubt. How very, very peculiar. So, what does it say inside? Yeah, I'm not going to show it because he's he's always digging up and this isn't really lying. It's just... I'd rather not say, Stanley. Oh, suit yourself. What do you make of this stone? That's a funny looking thing. It's got a cockerel on it. Yes, but have you seen anything like it? Never. Do you ever have strange dreams, Stanley? Me? I sleep as sound as a baby. I had one such dream last night. It was so vivid. What were it about? Yeah, I think I'm I'm done with giving them stuff because I'm not really getting it back, especially from him. And I I really think that he's that he knows um, from the warnings last night. He's he's pretty determined to not allow me to go on the dig. Um, I mean, it doesn't really change anything. If I give him more, he'll just know how far I've gotten into the, into the whatever's going on. But you know, I'll. I'll... Oh, nothing. Don't worry. Suit yourself. Goodbye. See you soon. Good morning, Mr. Kemp. Good day, Miss Tompkins. I'm here for his lordship's paper. Sorry, lass. Mr. Price hasn't dropped them off this morning. I heard he actually left the village yesterday. Indeed, I can vouch for that. Ma'am? Good day. Oh dear, his lordship won't be pleased. My sincerest apologies, Miss Tompkins. I'll come back in a few days. Ta-ra! Goodbye. Right, so... <coughs> the knife is stuck deep in the table. No, there's another person gone or disappeared. Goodness me, I can't budge it. Be careful, Miss Bateman. You'll cut yourself. I spent all morning trying to get that bloody thing out. I shall be having words with that scoundrel next time he shows his face. <laughs> Curses. We have our very own Excalibur. It's all yours if you can pull it out, King Arthur. <laughs> 
You gotta wiggle it. I do not wish to damage Mr. Kemp's table any further than it already has been. Hmm. I can't think of a way to get it out right now. I could try I everything. Use the filthy lavatories. I could try everything, but I'm I'm not gonna. I'll try it if I uh, if I need it. Right. I need to convince Mr. Bryden to let me excavate Hobbs Barrow and find out where this journal came from. Curses! I forgot I had this worm in my pocket. Poor thing is dead now. Rest in peace, Kenneth. Mm. That's market day. She is busy setting up her stall. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> oh, hello. Father Roach still looks rather pallid. Good morning, Father Roach. Ah, Miss Bateman. What a pleasure to see you again. Have you tracked down Mr. Shoulder yet? Don't get me started. I'll take that as a no. Indeed. What brings you to the square today? I'm meeting a couple of young congregation members to go over some scripture. You're welcome to join us. Thank you, Father Roach, but I have quite a busy day ahead of me. We will be at St. Edmund's, should you wish to join us later. What do you know of Lord Panswick? Oh, yes. A rather important fellow around here. His vast land holdings give many a steady employment. I hear he is renovating an old chapel on his land. Ah, I've heard such reports. He believes this to be a godless land. Something I wholeheartedly disagree with. To which god his chapel will be dedicated to remains a matter of concern. Why do you say that? Oh, my apologies. Don't listen to my oafish conjecture. Let us move on. What do you make of this stone? Hmm. I don't recognize the symbol from any Christian iconography. Did you make it yourself? No, never mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to ask them about these things. Thanks for your time. Lord be with you. Well, let, let me look at the, the thing again. The, the stone, I mean. So... It sort of says I A uh, W, but it could also say it could also have um, the Greek. I think it's Zeta sideways. The rooster is there. I know there's a rooster. There's also a little star figure there, which we're getting sort of closer to the obscure or whatchamacallit witchcraft nature. I'm not sure what the rooster has to do with anything or the chicken. In the picture or in the uh, at the at shoulders location. Uh, can't can't connect any dots right now. The anvil looks heavy. The blacksmith looks closed. A finely made horseshoe. The blacksmith must also be a farrier. The horseshoe is nailed firmly to the wall. So he's waiting for a couple of congregation members. Join them in prayer. I do have other things to do. Um, wonder if I can enter the church. I mean, she's just, they're still locked, so I just gotta try them again. <laughs> They are still locked. Oh, 
Oh, there's nothing I'm missing there. So I could show the journal. Oh, hello. Thomasina! Good morning, Arthur. You look a bit addled. Are you feeling all right? I am not used to drinking as much as we did. Aye, my head is pounding. To tell you the truth, Arthur, I've had a somewhat puzzling morning. Oh? Someone slipped this journal under the door of my room. Whose journal is it? I have no idea. The text refers to some sort of excavation. Well, Stanley must be playing tricks on you. He swore his innocence. I thought perhaps you might have done it? No, it wasn't me. That's for certain. Somehow I have a clear memory of last night. So, <clears throat> they couldn't drug him? So maybe Stanley sort of remembers something, he knows things, and that's why he's like an alcoholic or something. And they couldn't drug the drinks yesterday because I had the other one, so they didn't know which one they were gonna spike. So that's, that's what I, I'm thinking. I had a splendid time last night. I, I even remember most of it this time. Thanks for listening to me going on. I really appreciate it. The feeling is mutual. Thank you too, Arthur. Shouldn't you be manning the station? The line is down. Track damage between Bewley and Bakewell. No trains for a day or more. Does that mean I'm stranded here? For the time being, Thomasina. Capital. I mean, yeah, I, I think everything I said before and what's happened, I think, I, I mean, he's not an obvious plant to sort of follow me around. He could be. And, you know, you can, you can never know. Because there's some weird stuff going on here. But I, I doubt he sort of knows anything about, like, maybe he, he's just traumatized by something or something like that, but I don't think he can really give me anything about these things. Let me try the stone, because it's more sort of impersonal than the journal. What do you make of this stone? It's a good shape for skimming across water. What is it? I'm not sure. It was strapped to the cover of the journal. How mysterious. I wonder who left me this journal then? Mind if I take a closer look? Please, go ahead. The writings of a madman. I don't disagree. Did the sketches mean anything to you? No, not at all. But they turned my stomach. You might want to show this to Mother Mildred. Who is Mother Mildred? Some think her a witch. A witch? Aye. She might be able to help you with the symbols. Where can I find her? She lives alone in a little cottage within Hearn Wood here. You shouldn't have too much trouble finding her. Thanks, Arthur. You're welcome. Why do people think Mother Mildred is a witch? Just because a woman lives alone in the woods doesn't mean she flies about on a broomstick. There's more to it than that. They say she lays with demons. Who are they? Oh, you know, local folk. Hogwash. Some also go to her for potions and spells. Spells? Come now, Arthur. Truth be told, she's a nice old lady. I sometimes see her foraging in the brambles around here. Will she burn at the stake sometime soon? You might think us backward in Beulet, Thomasina, but we're not that backward. Sorry, Arthur. I only meant to tease. Goodbye. Tara. Never heard Tara before. Thomasina, dear, come say goodbye to your father. Come on now, don't make him wait. I don't want to. Aren't you going to miss me? I hate you, Daddy. Those are strong words for such a little lady. I want to come with you. We've been through this, little bird. You can't come with me this time. 
but we'll go to Seabra next month. I promise. Oh, what a dig that shall be. I hate you! Well, I love you. See you soon, little bird. Hmm. <laughs> That's not nice to end on. <laughs> end on something like that. Whoops. Let me just go back, just in case I missed like a rock or something. Because we do have this weird stone in our in our pockets. She lives around here somewhere. Oh, resin. Resin has been oozing from the stump. It looks set now. Let's try to grab some. The resin has set somewhat. It's firmly gripped the stump. <clears throat> I've collected some waxy resin. We can get to play the violin or some shit. I think it's a... Uh, what else are they used for? Just to make things a little sticky. There she is. Don't want to startle her. He, the vicar said he had some berries. So he was visiting here for some reason. So he's not that. He is, I guess he's like trying to be Christian, but he knows that more stuff is going on. It's the old woman I saw at Bewley Station. All right. Please, forgive my intrusion. Are you Mother Mildred? Some call me that. I prefer Mildred Walker, given as that's my name. Apologies. Thomasina Bateman. I think we met at Bewley Station. I take it Panswick's men have cleared off. Good riddance. Those ruffians would cut their own noses off if he asked them to. I recognised you the moment I laid eyes on you at the station. I beg your pardon? Oh, yeah, it's quite a striking family resemblance. You have your father's eyes, Miss Bateman. You knew my father. Such piercing blue eyes he had. What a handsome young man, William. He was here, in Bewley. Oh, yes. A long time ago, mind. 25 years by my reckoning. But I'll never forget those eyes. All right, that's surprisingly direct. Why was my father in Bewley? You were helping Samuel Bride and excavate Hobbs Barra. You must be jesting. Do I look like I'm jesting? How did you come to meet my father? One might say I have a reputation in these parts. Folks from all around come to me for help with their ailments. Ernwood is abundant with flora that, if mixed correctly, will cure almost any ill. Your father must have caught wind of this, as one day he came to me. Asking for a cure. A cure for what? Your mother was with child, and she was suffering the most terrible nausea. Adam. I made something to help her. The journal. This was entered in the journal. It belongs to my father. What journal? Take a look at this. A passage recalls meeting a local wise woman to seek a tincture for his beloved's nausea gravidarum. Aye, that's me. I made the tincture for him. This... this is incredible. You don't recognise your own father's handwriting? It's been so many years since I've seen it. What do you make of this stone? I-A-W. I haven't a clue. Perhaps it's an old folk trinket, or a talisman of some kind. The moors are steeped in folklore. What can you tell me about the excavation? Well, not much. I only met your father twice. The last time he asked me if I knew anything about binding magic. Binding magic? He said he needed it for the excavation. Hogwash. 
My father is a man of logic and reason. Why would he be asking about such nonsense? Perhaps you don't know him as well as you think you do. Anyway, I know nothing of magic and told him so. He seemed disappointed. I never saw him again, but I understand the excavation went ahead. Samuel bride and hanged himself not long after. Reason enough for you to stay well clear of that place. You never saw my father again after the excavation? No. I always assumed he just went home. Hmm. Who excavated Hobbs Barrow alongside Samuel Bryden and my father? From memory, it were just the two of them. What do you think my father meant by binding magic? I've no idea. He didn't explain more and I didn't wish to pry. Hmm. This just doesn't sound like my father at all. You'll have to ask him yourself. I'm afraid my father has been incapacitated since I was a child. He cannot speak nor move. Terrible. Oh, I I'm sorry. You said that the flora here could cure almost any ill. Almost, my dear. But your father's affliction sounds beyond my abilities. Charles Bryden mentioned there was a third man involved in the excavation. Is that so? Well, you best ask him about it. He knows more than I do. Can you tell me anything about Leonard's shoulder? I know of him, as is the nature of such a small town. I also know he invited you here. Little escapes you, Miss Walker. So they say. My path rarely crosses with his. Let's put it that way. But he's a nice enough fellow. I see. Do you know Lord Panswick? I know his labourers make a mess of these woods, the brutes. The man himself hasn't graced me with his presence. You've never met him? Not since he were a wee lad. A maid brought him to me with a sore stomach. It were all the rich food they were feeding him. Now more. Thank you for your help, Ms. Walker. All right. Well, that was interesting. I think the first honest conversation I've had. Probably turns out to be totally fabricated. <laughs> they look somewhat like juniper berries. So maybe the vicar was feeling nauseous. He came over because it was still whistling and, you know, being happy. But I, I sort of think that maybe he recognized her as well or us or me or whatever. What are those berries you're picking? An ancient breed. No good for eating. However, they do have some medicinal qualities. I see. What are those berries? An However, I see. I shouldn't enter uninvited. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> like normal people have been talking her up and down from what she actually is. But she is sort of separated from the community, so I would imagine she tells the truth. Hopefully she won't get punished for it. Miss B. Oh. Yes. Remember what I told you when we first met. You're better off waiting for the next train back to the city. Why? Something terrible happened to Samuel Bryden in that barra. Whatever they found down there, I'd wager it got to your father too. Tell me you won't disturb Hobbs Barra. I can't make that promise, Mildred. Can't say I didn't warn you. There is something unnatural about that place. We must seek to understand the world by rational means, Ms. Walker. One cannot abandon reason. And shit. All right. Thomasina? Thomasina, come here this instant. I'm playing with Josephine. She can wait. This is very important. Hmm. <laughs> What is it, Mummy? It's... it's your father. Daddy's home? No, my dear. I must go to Bakewell with haste. Miss Bowes will look after you whilst I'm gone, is that clear? Where's Daddy? He's had... an accident. What happened? He's come off his horse. Silly Daddy. Will he be all right? Of course. Of course he will be fine. Your father is as strong as an ox. But I need to go collect him, all right? Can't I come too? No, dear. 
Miss Bowes will look after you. But I want to come. Go pick up your dolls, then come inside, all right? Yes, Mummy. A picture is being painted. Josephine. Josephine, it's time to go inside now. Where did Mommy go? him then and I can help him again I feel like going back into the hole I think she's I gonna shan't be here. visiting the badges again I was lucky to escape intact yeah there was more than one badger so that explains the weird oh nothing explains the weirdness of Arthur Tillett Arthur you won't believe it the journal belongs to my father. He was here in Bewley. Arthur? Hello? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to remember something. What is it? Maybe he's the third guy. I'm not sure. Something in the woods. It will come back to me. You say your father were in Bewley? Yes. Mildred said that he helped Samuel Bryden excavate Hobbs Barrow 25 years ago. Well, I'll be. Let's talk about it tonight at the plough. Yeah, maybe he was there too. And he's sort of gone a little loopy after that. He did say that it was his mother that made him sort of this way but then again things have been sort of the game has given you something obvious and then it's tricked me at least uh, see he looks really disoriented I, I would just leave him be pretty much <clears throat> let's just leave him be I'll, I'll do what is natural to me even though you know that's fine Arthur we'll talk later <clears throat> I hope you piece together your memories. Because I, I think if I told him about the dream, he might remember stuff. But maybe it's better he doesn't remember. <laughs> Alright. Oh, shit. Hello, dear. Good day. He's a little more handsome than your average Bewley resident. He was painting with purple. And I didn't really see what he was painting. I guess I... I believe we've met. Miss Thomasina Bateman, the famous antiquarian. My reputation precedes me. I can assure you it does. And you are? James. Are you a painter? You see this beck before you. Look at the water. See how it tumbles and falls. I seek one spot on which my eyes can rest. Be it a stone or a small corner of the current, I meet it with my gaze. And out of the tumbling and falling, a new land rises. I see a new world. You certainly have the eloquence of an artist. Do you know Leonard Shoulder? A man of Bewley? Yes. I care not for the men of Bewley. Only for the visitors. What do you know of Lord Panswick? A fine gentleman. Now that is someone who commands respect. Do you know him personally? No, I... I don't think anyone can really claim that. But what a tiring subject. Shall we discuss something a little more... exciting? I mean, I think he... Isn't he the Lord... Puswick? 
What are you painting? A new world. Quite the ambition. Indeed. My ambition knows no bounds. Can I see it? Not yet. It's not finished. And such a world is not complete without you in it. You flatter me, James. Nonsense. Say you'll let me paint you. Why not? Magnificent. You shall be the shining star of my new world. I don't really have the time now, though. Perhaps later? Don't fret, my dear. When the time comes, I shall call on thee. Capital. What do you make of this stone? It looks antique. You might want to keep a hold of it. Do you know of Hobbs Barrow? I'd like to know more about you, Thomasina. What time do you like to rise in the morning? How do you like your tea? What makes you happy? <clears throat> Late, with three spoons of sugar and spending time with my husband. You disappoint me. I sense no truth in your words. Are you a woman of dubious principles, Thomasina? You ask too many questions. Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. I'm turning into the villagers. I just don't trust slimy douchebags. <coughs> and I was gonna head this way anyway. To find the um find the farmer, maybe convince Oh hello. Hello. Follower. William, modest and gentle of heart. Oh, I don't want it. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Bateman? That's a uh, shoulder. That's my name. Oh, marvelous. It's me, Leonard Shoulder. Heavens! I'd given up on finding you. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I were on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I really am. I've been doing my best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, Mr. Shoulder. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvellous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear, Miss Bateman, I had no idea. Hmm. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Alright, I don't... The glove. I've forgotten about that. Let's start off with the letters. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colorful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I were a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously. Especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady traveling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. But why do you wish to excavate the barrow? 
I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Beaulieu for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. A most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm none of the sort. There was an eagle flying overhead, right there. Um, not sure if it means anything, but there were those plates in the inn with an eagle on them, so I don't know if it's like, uh, maybe some sort of tell of the future or something if I look at them again. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking everything. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Even Hernwood were sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his home there. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believe that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrow, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Yuli were no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand. Folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the place. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Although I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it, I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. Thin place. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. 
Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you all know. That's what I thought. <coughs> I think he... He's uh, humoring... Humoring me with his disbelief, I think. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh, no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. Hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the Barrow. I didn't foresee anyone I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. This is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Bateman. What do you make of this strange stone? A carving of a cockerel? Yes. It was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote, that Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of so's teeth. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colorful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. Has any explanation been offered for why this Saxnot cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. Right. So I think there was a light in the cobbler's home and it's market day, so maybe he's going to be around there to talk to. We'll see. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plow and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it back? Here. Thank you. We're peas of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And a chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. 
I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. I was starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. <clears throat> All right, so... Margaret's Lookout. Dedicated to Arthur's mother. I have no idea what's going on or what to make of this. He seems really sketchy. Um, I think he knows what's going on. And I think if the dreams are real, the goblin is actually... Um, the good guy, sort of, I guess. Maybe they returned something. They Someone took something from the, uh, the barrel, and then they returned it, or something like that. But it was a long discussion. I need to sort of digest it. So I guess this is a good spot to uh, leave this part of the story and uh we'll figure out what's going on piece by piece i would imagine uh see you on the next one